This is Timothy Martin's son, uh, Greg Martin, uh, and his first name is Timothy also, but we'll just call him Greg to keep it keep everybody uh, a little bit straight. <laughs> we've got too many. We got three Timothys on the line tonight, so we're happy to have everybody. And uh, welcome, Brother Greg. Are you there? I'm here. All right. Hello. Well, let I'm me. Let me tell you a little bit about that I know about you and uh, that you're a wonderful help and an asset to the team and you're, you've been helping us for quite a while. And you, we asked you to be a guest and you said, at first you turned us down and you said you didn't have much to talk about, but then uh, you said late, uh, last week, I think you said that uh, you would like to come on and you wanted to talk on the subject of UFOs and possibly extraterrestrials. Is that, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, you know, it, it takes a little bit of, uh, uh, I guess, courage to come out and start talking about uh, one of the most, I guess, uh, esoteric aspects of our society. So, um, but that's something that I'm very interested in, and I have a lot of experience in that. Uh, so, I think that I'm pretty qualified to talk about that subject. Excellent. Well, uh, you've had you've had more than one experience in that area. Yeah, I have. Um, I've seen uh, sightings. I've seen UFOs um, fly above me, above my, my house here. And uh, I've ever since then, that was about probably a year ago. That, w that was a really close, really close sighting. I've never expected that because uh, it was flying very low. Um, but ever since then, uh, you know, things started to become a little bit strange because uh, – you know, like you were talking about earlier, uh, the, the spirit does um, offer the direction and it's the way shower. But uh, there's there was a third voice that kind of popped up in my head at that point. Um, and I, ever since then, I kind of have developed a telepathic uh, communication uh, with the extraterrestrials um, as far as technology, um, science and things that we can do to further our cause. So a lot of the uh, work that uh, I'm able to, or I do, and, I, and a lot of suggestions that I give to uh, Timothy, um, you, Timothy, um, comes from, you know, ideas that I, I've gotten from them. And, uh, you know, also that's, like you were talking about the, uh, the, the, kind of the hands and feet of the father we're here to you know carry out the father's will uh if you uh if you want to consider you know we humans as the feet and these extraterrestrials you know th these are these are you know spirit uh led beings and you know they're kind of like the hands so the hands and the feet have to work together with the spirit and yeah. spirit is that connection is that common denominator between uh uh both uh, both parties so it's, it's kind of um it was kind of strange at first to you know kind of kind of notice that there's there's other stuff there's other uh things happening uh it's kind of like you know it's like you know when 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 the foot uh feels fire the legs tell uh the body to jump but it's like uh, you know, the hands are feeling fire and they're wanting the feet to, to move. So there has to be a line of communication uh, from the hands to the feet. And if that doesn't, if that doesn't, doesn't happen correctly. Yeah. Uh, let me let me explain a couple things to the listeners. Uh, you're speaking about the body of Christ. And uh, a, a lot of the listeners are you know, Christian background. So they understand that the body of Christ are all of us that are surrendered to God. Uh, we're the body of Christ and Jesus is the head. But yeah, you're absolutely right. We've got to learn to listen to the head and uh, listen to our other brothers and sisters also. And uh, you know, cooperate. In other words, uh, right. to cooperate. And, and that's what you're that's what you're referring to. Absolutely, and, and you know, it's, it, it, one thing is that we don't we don't just have brothers and sisters here. Um, we have brothers and sisters all over the place. These are these are uh, you know the, the universe is is so massive that it's it's impossible to we we have over uh, I believe something like a uh, hundred billion different species just on this planet alone. And if we if we are going to say that there there can't be life elsewhere, 
I mean, that's just kind of ridiculous in my mind. Yeah, absolutely. It uh, used to be promoted that there was no life elsewhere by the so-called scientific community, but really it was just, you know, the bankers and the rich in the government promoting that kind of philosophy. Uh, are you guys, yeah, I still, okay, I still hear you. Okay, uh, yeah, the, but now they've changed their tune a little bit, and uh, I'm not sure exactly why, but for now, for now they are finally admitting that there are other races and so on. There and most likely are other races and so on. But, you know, it's obvious to anybody thinking, uh, even the founding fathers believed thoroughly, the founding fathers of America, uh, United States of America, f believed thoroughly in what they called the plurality of worlds, which means that God is a great God and he's, he's created life on, on many different worlds. And I would say, well, virtually we will find life as mankind goes out and explores and tests and so on. And, and a lot of it's already been done top secret. We've vir virtually found life everywhere, and including in sp drifting in space. And this is a known, um, a known uh, somewhat in the scientific community. Um, I should have looked up the name of this organism, but they found a small organism. It's called something bear, B-E-A-R, and uh, but it literally survives fine in outer space. Uh, they drift from from one rock to another, or one planet to another, or whatever. Uh, they, you know, occasionally when meteors hit a planet or or moon or whatever, it, it hits hard enough that it throws things into space. And so these little animals, uh, they're extremely durable, and uh, they're like a microscopic insect, very small. But they're extremely durable. They can take the rigors of space itself. And, uh, you know, if, that, if there's animals that can do that, then you know there's got to be animals on every single planet. It's about, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And you brought up an interesting uh, thought here. Um, you know, you've discussed before how uh, faith is a, is a force. Um, and, and I kind of look at, you know, spirit as the, the final prime mover and the fundamental force, um, it's like a consciousness force that it is what arranges matter. It's what moves things, you know, for these uh, plurality of worlds to exist, so to speak. Amen. Uh, but I, I would look at the spirit as that, uh, that prime force. But you know, to me, it's like if, if the spirit is there moving and causing these things to happen, these motions to happen, uh, that means that just because there's motion, then life exists just be, just on the basis that spirit is moving uh, of moving matter. It's like if you have matter and the spirit's moving it, why is the spirit moving it? Yeah, amen. He, there has to be a reason why the spirit's moving it. I mean, he doesn't. He, the spirit, the, the infinite spirit, wouldn't you know be moving stuff around unless there was uh, you know life. That that required it or depended on that. Yeah, there's order in the universe. Things happen for a reason. Yeah, amen, amen. Yeah, the uh, another thing to help the listeners understand the whole situation is, you know, a lot of people want to want to put everything they don't understand into one box, and unfortunately, uh, man is still very primitive compared to uh, advanced civilizations, and because of that. Uh, it's a little bit like people, uh, you know, 2000, a thousand years ago in the middle of the dark ages, 1500 years ago in the middle of the dark ages, uh, you know, lightning, they would say, well, that was an act of God. Wind, that was an act of God. Thunder was an act of God. You know, that God was God or gods were pushing everything, the clouds around and pushing the earth around or whatever, you know, and all these different things because they didn't understand them. everything was an act of God. Uh, but now we understand a little more, we realize a lot of that stuff wasn't the act of God, that it's natural forces and natural processes that God put in place, and he, he put them in place, but they're continuing on, on their own because they, you know, they work according to his design, basically. And, right. uh, you know, same thing with life and death. It's kind of, uh, I kind of look at it as a, as a massive galactic universal uh, domino set that, you know, was the, the first domino tipped over, and this whole uh, creation basically was he, – he, he did all of his work by tipping with that one domino. He, he accomplishes everything that needs to happen uh, in, in one fatal, you know, fatal swoop. Yeah. That's got yeah. all tasks. 
Yeah, I can see I can see your point there. Uh, I often explain it this way that uh, that God is a creator. That's one of His hobbies, and so the fact that there's trillions and trillions of planets out there actually trillions is an understatement. There's, there's more than we can say, basically. Planets out there. We've, we've got one sun right here in the solar system, and we've got uh, you know we've got so they say nine planets. But if you really if you think about the moon around Jupiter, there's a bunch more planets there. That some of them are bigger than the Earth, you know. And there's, you know, so there's really a lot of planets. There's a lot of a lot of things we can call a planet, a moon and planets, and and that's just one solar system. And if you go out, uh, there's probably 20 or 30 or 40 right in the solar system that could be inhabited. I'll put it that way by intelligent life or some kind of life or whatever. So if you go out uh, further out, uh, you know all the stars have that kind of uh, that, those kind of situations going on. Uh, you know, there's wouldn't surprise me if there's ten or twenty or fifty planets around every single star out there, and so that uh, kind of gives people an idea that uh, all of them are not empty and barren and so on. There's there the reason the founding fathers believed in the plurality of worlds is because a lot of them had seen advanced ships. Even in those days, and you can look at ancient pictures and and so on, and you can see uh, paintings of uh, flying saucers uh, from 500 years ago, 300 years ago, and so on, and even longer. Am I right, brother? Yeah. Yeah. So that helps people realize that uh, that advanced ships have been coming here a long time, and that's the reason. Uh, you know, on quite a few different civilizations that believe thoroughly in the. Uh, in the extraterrestrial uh, connection. Now, what do you think? Do you, you think all the extraterrestrials are good or all of them are bad or all well, of them? Uh, sorry, I think you're cutting out a little bit on my end here. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, that. I was going to say, what do you think? Do you think all the extraterrestrials are good or all of them are bad or what do you think? Well, the ones that I have, I had experience with, uh, they are unbelievably good. Uh, you know, I'm not... I wouldn't say that you know probably they're all good, but I wouldn't also uh, say that all humans are good. But that doesn't necessarily make them bad. Right. Uh, um, so you know, that that really does bring uh, you know hold those up because you know if if there's a terrestrial here and they're good, you know what, why are they here? What are they doing? And you know what good things are they doing? Yeah. Uh, and what are their, what are, what what are the reasons why they're here? Uh, it's probably one of the points that I want to kind of hit home here um, while on the broadcast is that, uh, you know, they really do uh, care about the welfare of the, the human race. And uh, it seems that we're kind of in a transition time that uh, we, we are kind of at a uh, point where we have to stop doing the things that we're doing or there's going to be huge problems, you know, extinction. Um, so, they're, they're, I think that they're here mainly to kind of facilitate that, uh, and they're, they're here mainly in larger number than they, they used to be. But uh, there seems like every day I, I go into Facebook, there's a little uh, program uh, or a little uh, uh, outside website that I can search. Uh, I, I searched the quotation, I saw a UFO, and it searches all of the Facebook statuses uh, from Facebook. And, you know, every night there's about 30 or 40 people uh, that are seeing these things, lights, and they have they have descriptions of them, and they all say, you know, oh my gosh, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. Uh, I can't believe what I saw. It, 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 I, it can't it can't have been a UFO, you know. Um, so it, it, it seems like it, it, it's a widespread event uh, or a widespread phenomenon that people are seeing these things in large numbers. Um, so I think it really comes down to the person's perception of what they're seeing. So, yeah, for the audience, I'd like to interject when you're ready. Uh, can I, can I step in here or do you got some? Well, let me just say one more thing. Okay. I think that it really comes down to the person's perception on, you know, what they're looking at. And, and that really determines whether or not, uh, the, the person, you know, an individual may see a UFO or not. Because I think that they take a lot, they have a lot of discretion in uh, revealing themselves to people that uh, may not be quite ready for it. Yeah, yeah. I've uh, been blessed to see a lot of these things. I don't know. Maybe it's because I look up at the sky a lot more than most people when I'm outside. Uh, 
uh, maybe it's because uh, I, I try to stay away from big cities and where you know cities drown out the light to the sky and so you don't see things. Whereas when you're out in the country, you got more more of a view of the stars and so on. And uh, I remember one time this was in the daytime, and I've seen a lot of these things in the daytime too. Um, uh, it was in the daytime. Uh, a friend and I were were he driving out. He had a long driveway, and he, and he was here in Ohio, and he was driving out to the end of the driveway. And there was this remote area of Ohio. There was hardly any traffic, and virtually no traffic at all, except for us. And uh, he pulled to the end of his driveway. And you know how you look both ways before you pull out. And he looked both ways, and I looked both ways. And sitting down to the left, uh, there was a flying saucer about the size of, uh, I'd say about the size of uh, 20 or 30 school buses put together. So that'd be like a small shopping center or something, you know, a large store, uh, like the size of Walmart or something. To that effect, uh, maybe not quite as big as Walmart. But anyway, you get the idea. It's, it's fairly, I'd say, uh, 200 feet in diameter, 300 feet in diameter, somewhere in that range. And it was too, it was, it looked like it was, there was two rows of windows. So there was at least two stories in there that they could see out. And uh, it was just hovering right over the road. And this was back in the, uh, around about the late 80s, early 90s. And he, and in those days, virtually nobody would admit that flying saucers are real. Uh, if you did, they figured you're ready for the nut house. And, uh, and so he's looking at this thing, and I'm looking at this thing, and we didn't say anything. We were just looking at it, and we could see the windows in the windows we could see that there were people in there walking around looking out and they weren't they didn't look human they they uh they looked like they had larger heads than we do and uh the eyes didn't look you know they looked quite a bit larger than ours and they looked probably shorter than us you couldn't tell for sure but um, it was it was fairly close range and we sat there for like two or three or four minutes and that craft sat there for like two or three or four minutes and then it suddenly took off at a super high rate of speed, just really fast and really sudden. And uh, and he, you know, we sat there for another five or six seconds after it took off, and then he turned out, and uh, where we were going, he could have went either way because we had to, you know, you know how some places are. You can go two routes to get there. And uh, he wound up turning the direction away from where the craft had been, where the flying saucer had been. And... Uh, uh, let's see, we got uh, further inference on this. My state on the other Okay. Anyway, uh, okay, we got a, a question there for later in the show. But anyway, uh, he, that, that brother could not admit. A few minutes later, he, when I started talking to him about it, he, he, he didn't want to talk about it. He didn't want to admit that he ever saw it. <laughs> it's just so shocking for him. Just so shocking for him, and and that's the way a lot of people were back then. Uh, just a lot of people were that way. And nowadays, more people are talking about it, and more people are seeing them. Uh, but I do want to clarify one other point, and that's that uh, all other races are not good. Uh, you know, there's it's just like people are. Some people are good, some people are bad, and and then there's kind of in between people that uh, they're they're good one minute and bad the next. They're good for one day, and then they'll steal your wallet the next day. You know, stuff like this. So you've got uh, three kind of types of people, the good, the bad, and the in-between. And out there in in those other races, there are some races that are generally good and races that are generally bad. But it's just like people here, you know. It's, you know, it's, there's, there's races that are, there's just civilizations that are much better than here. And there's civilizations that are probably worse or just as bad as here, too. So that gives people an idea of what's really going on. And uh, they're not, people tend to think they're, a lot of people in Christian circles tend to think these guys are, are unclean, you know, unclean spirits, uh, demons, if you want to say it that way, or unclean spirits. Mm. And that was a popular, it has been a popular philosophy uh, for a long time. Um, but, uh, and there are such a thing as unclean spirits, but those are people that don't have physical bodies. And most of these, I mean, I, I've, I've worked Area 51. I've, I've actually gone in the crafts, and these are built for children. I mean, I, I've seen a few aliens alive, but not Area 51. I didn't see any the aliens. Uh, they've got them, you know, in cold storage, but I understand uh, somewhere. But uh, the ones that, the two alien craft I've been in are both 
I mean, you can barely fit through the door, and you can't stand up in the ship. Uh, it's, uh, you know, obviously these are not demons. You know, these are actually, demons don't need ships, and they don't want to build tiny ships. You know what I mean? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, the, uh, I mean, if there are, are demons in space, uh, I think that, that might be an issue that the uh, universal infinite spirit will want to remedy pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. God has confined, confined the uh, unclean spirits to the earth realm. It says that in the Bible. Um, it, you know, some people think it hasn't happened yet, but I think it's probably already happened. They're confined here, so if, if you believe they're confined here, then they can't get in a flying saucer and fly to, to Mars or Moon or some other star system. Uh, so that should help people. I don't know if it helps people or not, but it's, it's an interesting subject. Did you have something else you'd like to share on that along those lines? Well, um, I think uh, I'd kind of like to go into a little bit about um, the communication and how that takes place and uh, kind of the, the, the purpose and the, the kind of the way that that unfolds. Uh, I remember you, tell, you told me a story uh, not too long ago uh, since, that since you, were a child, since you were a child, you had um, telepathic communication uh, with the spirit. Um, I don't know if you want to show that story, but me yeah, personally, yeah. it's yeah. a... Yeah, go ahead. You, it, well, I'll, I'll share, you want me to share mine first? Yeah, if you want to go ahead and share okay. yours first, it'll be fine. Yeah, the, the Lord has led me, and I think he leads everybody. When we surrender to him and start doing our best and start studying the, the Word of God, the, the Lord will lead you in your spirit. This uh, I was talking a little bit about that in the teaching, about how the Lord leads us through the spirit. But he actually would lead me toward everything. I, I got to where, I mean, this didn't happen automatically, but I studied a tremendous amount because I was interested in learning once I came to the Lord. And he actually, the Lord, would, uh, the Holy Spirit would actually uh, get where I could, I, without even studying, I would know the answer to any question that I was I would get, I would get tests that I hadn't, hadn't studied for or prepared for or anything. And, and I would look at the question and I'd know the answer that the teacher wanted, and and I'd not only know the answer the teacher wanted, but if I if I asked, I'd, he'd give me the answer, the real answer too, which is usually about half the time it wasn't even the same. You know, it's two different things. You know, so you gotta put the answer the teacher wants so you get a good grade. But uh, you know, it's good to know what the real answer is too. You know, so that that is uh, is that the story you were thinking of? Yeah, and uh, you know, I kind of described it to you as kind of a uh, the little information packets that unfold themselves like over over time like uh they 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 get like planted in your brain like a seed uh almost instantaneously and you you can feel you can feel them come in because they're like uh like sparks of like uh you know you're feeling very spiritually charged when they happen but they also uh kind of you know kind of a surprise because you know if, if you're if you're thinking on uh, a problem or you're, or or you know whatever it may be, uh, the like you said, the answer comes to you, uh, and you you don't even know why you know the answer, but you just have it, and more time is spent trying to figure out why the answer to the problem is you know X, uh, and what and because you know you know the you, you know what they're trying to do. you know that they're telling you the answer, but the mind doesn't know why that's the answer, uh, and so a lot of time is spent figuring out why that is the solution uh, compared to, you know, something else. But, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's interesting to me because I really think that uh, this has a lot of uh, potential application in, in, when, when communicating with these, with these extraterrestrials through the spirit um, or with the spirit in uh, developing uh, technology uh, and I'm, I, I was going to ask you personally, how, how, how has that uh, played into uh, your, you know, engineering and, uh, you know, uh, inventing? How, how has uh, being led in, in your communication telepathically, how, how has that influenced uh, what, you, what, what you've been able to accomplish with this and this technology? Yeah, absolutely. Uh... You know, I, I, I try not to, personally, I try not to use the term telepathic. Uh, it doesn't bother me that you're using it. But uh, the 
there there does seem to be a way to communicate mind to mind but uh, when i'm led and all these communications i'm getting from god are definitely coming from the spirit they're not coming from the mind and it's a different thing it's uh, yeah uh, you know it's it's uh, i guess it's you know it's it's the instinct or the intuition and a lot of times you don't ever hear words, but you just suddenly know, and it comes right up out of your spirit, it comes right out of your heart, if you want to say that. It comes out of your inner, innermost being, and that's that's uh, it, when when we're working on technology. You're asking about technology. A lot of times there'll be a problem to solve, and I won't know what the solution is, but I know somebody that does. You know, I know the Lord, and He knows the solution, and so I just ask Him, and then I'll be get quiet in my spirit and listen. And meditate. You meditate on the things of God, and often it'll just suddenly pop up right out of my spirit the solution. And that's that's uh, that's actually called the word of knowledge or the gift of knowledge, where you can know almost anything if you if you've got it. Uh, you know, it's up to God how much He gives you. But uh, when I was in the high school years, He would literally tell me everything. That's that's uh, high school and college years. Uh, that's that's why I excelled so well and went from a you know went to basically to a straight A student and and actually passed several grades. I started taking college classes at a very young age and, and you know so on. It was all because of the Lord. It wasn't because of me. And then people will people will often hear that and they'll say. So God che- helped you cheat on tests, and <laughs> and I guess if you consider that cheating, but I see it happening with a lot of people besides me. I, I've watched uh, Jeopardy, and the uh, the hardest questions are always to the young people that uh, that have a powerful anointing of God, and they're competing against each other, and they'll they'll be asking questions that nobody's ever heard of, and and they'll be knowing the answers, you know. So I, I know that a lot of people besides me have that same anointing. Yeah, the uh, it's kind of funny because uh, you know it's like people that people that have that uh, they're so hungry for knowledge they just want they just they will the spirit just makes you so hungry to learn and it makes you so interested in the in the creation that it's like a, a never ending quest and uh, sort of knowledge that really you know I I used to hate school. I used to, I, oh man, it was horrible. I hated school. I thought it was, you know, pointless. Um, but it's only until, you know, recently, and I think that, you know, working with you, Timothy, I think that that's really helped out a lot because you really uh, sparked my my uh, interest here. But um, I really think that when you're, the spirit does make you hungry for knowledge and, and it will put you in contact with people uh, that have the answers or, uh, you know, so, so stuff like that. So yeah. the answers are right out there. Uh, you just got to, you got to, you know, kind of get into that mode, like you were saying. Amen. And for the family of God, you know, people, the listeners need to realize that the family of God is, you know, God's not just one person. It's the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And then he's got, he's got the body of Christ, which you could say is the family of God. Uh, you know, in other words, there's, there's the whole family. You see what I'm saying? And uh, that's good for people to realize that God is working as a team. In other words, uh, the family of God is working together as a team, if you want to say it that way. So the, we are the body of Christ, and we've gone over that in previous teachings, that uh, the body is the one doing the physical work, whereas the head is being is Jesus. Jesus is the head, and we are the body. And there's many scriptures that say that. And so God is trying to organize his people, and people do need to cooperate to bring these solutions it's not just going to happen because we want it to. It's going to happen because uh, 300 people or more work, learn to work together and, and make it happen, basically. So Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of, uh, you, know, you, you can either be uh, those hands and feet in, that, in, in the body, or you can be the hands and feet uh, in the body that thinks that it's the head. So it's like you can't have a, you can't have a body that thinks that it can think for itself. Uh, that just doesn't work out very well. Right, right, right. It, that's that's one of the problems. Uh, the the single biggest lack is people don't feed on the Word of God enough. But if they do, then they realize they need to work together as a team to uh, accomplish the things that God has for us on this planet. It's it doesn't happen because everybody's a lone ranger. It happens because people work together to make things happen. Absolutely. Yeah. Amen. Well, it's good to have you, brother. Uh, we're we're almost up on our hour. Uh, let's see if we've got some questions and and go on there. Um, let's. Uh, let's see. I, I am on the uh, Justin TV uh, chat room, so I'll be able to pass along questions from the chat room as well. Okay. And so far, you don't have any questions. 
Uh, we have one here. Uh, they're asking about the mis the missile that was fired out of uh, Los Angeles. That was probably um, it was Tuesday, Monday, maybe. Uh, it looked like a it looked like a you know ballistic intercontinental missile uh, being launched in the in the uh, in the in the Pacific Ocean. It was just this massive you know trail of smoke and fire. And uh, the government, of course, says that you know we don't know what you're talking about. You guys didn't see anything. We don't know about any missile. So, Yet I happen to know that uh, the I think it was the Air Force they they uh, restricted air like airspace access to that particular region uh, that the missile would have been fired from. Uh, although the the Pentagon is denying, and all of, all of the um, military agencies are denying that anything happened at all. But uh, we can see that that's probably not true because. Uh, they did shut down the airspace over that particular area of uh, near Los Angeles. Wow, wow, that's that's impre I didn't know about any of that. So that just happened this last week. Uh, it was a couple of days ago. Um, you know, I don't, I have no idea. You know what the heck it was. I mean, there's some speculation that they were firing at extraterrestrials because um, you know we we didn't see any missile missiles landing here uh, on any. Uh, continent of the world so uh you know who knows what would happen to it i know that the the uh ets they don't they don't uh allow any they, they basically block any uh uh atomic uh nuclear weapons from being fired and detonated uh, i know recently they've uh been able to uh go and go to where the where the u.s has their missiles uh, stored they were um they were able to gain complete access to the missile system, turn it off and on, and gain full control over the launch capabilities. Uh, but it, it, it's just funny because uh, you know they, they they have such advanced technology that they're able to you know hack into our most sophisticated security and take complete you know control over our little uh, you know pea shooters yep. as, as they would probably consider them. Yeah, they've actually neutralized uh, atomic. You know, atomic weapons need nuclear material to to blow up. They won't. They won't blow up without it. And they've actually neutralized the atomic, the uh, radioactive material uh, on more than one occasion inside the bombs without taking the bombs apart. Mm. The alien ship would just be there for a short period of time. You're cutting out there a little bit. I can't. Uh, oh, am I? Am I? How's it now? Is it about the same? I can't hear you now. Yeah, you just cut out a little bit. Okay, I'll repeat that then if you think that's good. Uh, the the extraterrestrials uh, have actually on many occasions neutralized the radioactive material that's inside of the bombs. You know, without the radioactive material, uh, the uranium or whatever it is, uh, they won't they won't explode. Uh, they won't go nuclear. Uh, I'll put it that way. Um, <laughs> And these these extraterrestrial ships have, in many occasions, not just one, but at least at least five different occasions that I know of, they have hovered over different military bases and neutralized all their bombs. And uh, this is this is quite uh, without ever landing or without ever taking a bomb apart, they are able to neutralize this material at a distance. Yeah. And so that's quite yeah. impressive that they're that they're that interested in peace and health and safety for this planet. And um, you know, it kind of helps people realize maybe that they're not bad guys. You know, they are doing this stuff. I can I can say firsthand, I know of five different uh, instances that they did this. And so you know, it's you know, it's it shows that they're they're on the side of good because anybody with a thinking mind knows that these bombs are not good. We shouldn't be letting them off on this planet. The radiation you know poisons the planet. And you know, just for years, thousands of years, actually, it doesn't go away. Uh, not, not to mention the fact that when these things are dropped, I mean, you're talking about like a mass genocide of people in a, you know a split second, which is just you know horrifying. Yeah, and, and even if it's and even if it's these uh, tests, you're you're young, but when I was your age, it was very common to hear of a nuclear bomb that they were testing, and they would detonate it, you know, in the ocean quite often, the South Pacific. And you know, I killed a lot of ocean. You're life. cutting out again. Are you there? Yeah, you know, it seems like every time I'm saying something important, I get cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> How about now? You hear me good? 
Uh, yeah, I can hear you now. I said, uh, when I was your age, uh, it was uh, very good. Uh, uh, again, hold on. Try, uh, try now. Okay. When I was your age, how is it now? Is it good or about the same? Okay, good. Yeah, uh, when I was going through okay over here, so. Okay. Yeah. I think it's going good okay uh, over at Justin TV, so I think you're pretty good. Okay. Mine, mine's just cutting out. Well, it doesn't hurt to say it again. When I was your age, it was very common to hear about a nuclear bomb being tested and going off somewhere on the planet, usually in the South Pacific. And they would test these things two or three a year, maybe more, and uh, blowing off huge nuclear bombs in, in, the, in the South Pacific. And people don't realize it, but that kills billions of animals, at least millions, and deafens them permanently, blows out their eardrums, the ocean animals. Uh, plus, you know, whatever island they blew up, uh, you know, it's a lot of times they'd set them off on an island, but sometimes they just drop them in the ocean. And this is just, uh, you know, just uh, criminal what they were doing. And, uh, you know, thanks, thanks to extraterrestrial intervention now, there's very few of these things being tested or going off that I know of in the last 10 years. Uh, yep. So if, if anybody has news about what's actually, if there are some going off, let me know. But uh, as far as I know, there haven't been any in about 10 years. Yeah, we, we just heard the other day, uh, the, like 50 missiles from the, from the, the U.S. Uh, nuclear arsenal were taken offline mysteriously. Uh, it, was like all, it was all over, I think I read it on uh, maybe Fox News or CBS, something like that. But uh, it was like overnight or, you know, just in one day, 50, 50 of these missiles just went offline. Wow, that's amazing. Yep. 50, 50, 50. Not, not 15, but 50, five yeah. Five zero, yeah. Amazing. That's amazing. Just just like that. Uh, so it's like, you know, th these are the most protected, you know, uh, high security, some of the, well, mainstream weapons. Yeah, absolutely. The highest uh, security weapons that we have. And uh, it's like, how, what do they have them like all hooked up to like one computer, like running Windows or something? Yeah, it just crashes. I don't know. Well, yeah, no, these are these are definitely uh, uh, ex friendly extraterrestrial intervention. That's that's the top on this planet, and and you know I'm I'm I, I'm welcoming all the good guys. Anybody that wants to help is is welcome to help. You know, so absolutely. Anybody that's uh, that's getting rid of nuclear bombs, that's a good thing. Getting rid of nuclear material, turning it into non radioactive material, that's a good thing. You know, and the politicians while they're at it. Yeah, yeah. Turn a few politicians into into. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. Well, hey, it's good having you. We've uh, uh, we. I don't know. Do you have more questions that we should answer? Uh, um, and it's it's kind of a long question, but it's a good one. Uh, this is from. Uh, Brother Murray Ritter from Amsterdam, if I'm pronouncing his name right. Um, uh, he asked, uh, would you please explain the difference in the identifiers between counterfeit and the real thing as far as organizations for free energy and quantum energy go? And uh, wow. basically, he's absolutely right. They they look a lot alike, and that's what kind of what he's asking about. You know, that's there's there's organizations out there that, you know, per, you know, they claim to have the solutions and so on, and they look a lot like. Counterfeit, and it's a good question. We we've had this conversation, but not on the air. We've had it with several people. Uh, if you hold up a hundred dollar. Difference. It's an expert. You can't tell the difference. Mm -hmm. And so the same thing with different organizations. Uh, you know, even even uh, there's people out there saying almost exactly the same thing that really have no interest in helping humanity. Uh, they're just trying to help their pocket to, to have more money in it. You know, and, and a bigger house and a fancier car and another jet that they already have one. They don't need another one. You know, that type of thing. <laughs> And, uh, you know, so people need to know. And so one of the ways is, yeah, are they really helping the world? Or are they living, are they humble people? Are they are they doing, you know, their best to help the world? Or are they living real high off the hog? In other words, are they living in a mansion and driving fancy cars and, and they have their own jet and all this stuff? If if they are, then they may, they, that's a sign. If they're, they're living in luxury, 
uh, and not doing much to help the planet, then that's a sign that they may be uh, not. They may be the counterfeit, and that that's one sign. Now the uh, the real sign, as far as technology goes, is to get an engineer or two engineers or three engineers that are highly skilled. I say highly skilled, skilled at power measurements and measure the machines to see, and then this, of course, isn't in, in talking about other ministries as much as other organizations claiming to have free energy, uh, you know, measure their machines and get independent engineers verifications, and very few other organizations besides WITS have any, any independent engineer verifications, um, and when I say independent, that means independent, that means they're not getting paid by, uh, by somebody that, you know, that, uh, I'll give example. Uh, Stephen Greer and his organization, they keep claiming they have found somebody with a free energy machine and they confirmed it. His engineers confirmed that it's real. Well, the problem with that, number one, is they don't own the machine. It belonged to some scientist or inventor or, or uh, somebody else, and so they don't own the machine. But number two is he had his own scientists confirm that it's real, and, and his own paid engineers confirm that it's real. That's not a real confirmation. You need independent engineers to confirm that it's real. And and uh, and that's going to help if you can get to, if there's three or four on one machine or three or four on the same organization, uh, that's going to be really good. The Bible says, "Let every matter be established by the mouth of two or three witnesses." And so you need you know on something important like this, it's good to have three or more. And I said three or four, but you know it's good to have three or more independent engineers to verify. And these are actual engineers that know how to measure energy, so there's no confusion. Yeah. Uh, and and they need to be, you know, they, like I said, they can't be being paid by somebody. They need to be doing it on their own dollar, so that you know that you're going to get an honest report. The only they have no alternative motive for saying things that are not true. And that, that you know, also just to interject here real quick. Uh, those those groups out there that are uh, the ones that do the quote unquote independent verifications, if they don't have a stake in the in the final product. They're, they have no option at all of verifying uh, an outside of their own network. Uh, they have no intention at all of, of verifying a working technology if they can't get a piece of uh, the pie. And that's, just, that's not why we're here. We're not here to you know have a punch and pie party. We're here to you know help the world. Yeah, what you're saying is uh, is there's. In, in most cases, uh, the the engineers that are well I, I don't I only know of one other organization that actually has independent engineers and I don't know for sure that they're entirely independent. Well I should say two. There's Joseph Newman. It's, it's almost as if, you know, they'll they'll give you a verification uh until their uh their you know, their people, their network that your stuff is real as long as they it's like as long as they get a piece of the action, as long as they get a piece of uh of the pie, so to speak. It's like they won't offer that verification. and They'll say it's false and, and, and it's a scam just because they don't get anything out of the deal. Right, right, right. Yeah, then in other words, there's people that are just, that are not honorable is what you're saying, and, and even engineers that are not honorable. Uh, but what I wanted to point out to the people listening is – they, uh, the real, uh, there, there is one other, or, there's two other organizations besides WITS that has independent engineers that I know of that have verified that it's real and over unity. And then one of them is Kjorn, and that's over in Ireland. The, the, the machine they have is only milliwatts, uh, less than a watt, and uh, it's probably less than a thousandth of a watt, or, you know, it's a very small amount of power. But they have a few engineers that have come forward, I think three or four, that have said it's real. So that is one other real organization that has something real. And then there's also Joseph Newman's organization, which he's had probably uh, 10 or 15 engineers document that his machine's over Unity. Uh, it is a very large machine, not very practical. Uh, but there are two other organizations, and then there's WITS, which we have uh, we have over uh, video testimonials. We have about nine up on YouTube right now. So nine independent engineers that are not getting paid anything, and people can talk to those guys if they want to to, find, to verify that we're telling the truth. They're just honest people that want to see this stuff go forward, uh, honest engineers. And some of them have their own engineering company. So it's not just engineers, but also en independent engineering companies. Uh, you know, So that should help people. Plus, we have uh, a whole bunch of written ones. I'd say about 25 written testimonials 
uh, that are not just video and audio testimonial. So uh, that should help people understand the difference between the two and help people, what you said, Greg, should help people understand the uh, how it's easy for uh, greed and corruption to get in there and a lot of people, uh, you know, given, you know, making false testimonies, I put it that way. Yep. But there are very few engineers, independent engineers and other companies. Uh, there's only, like I said, there's, as far as I know, there's only those two. Uh, Dini has had a few people that have said that his stuff is over Unity, so I guess maybe there's three. So there's Bedini, there's uh, Stjorn, and there's Joseph Newman, and us, so that's four all together. Um, uh, there seems to be... These are the, these are the people that, that you know of that have gotten the independent verifications. You know, there could be more uh, that, you know, uh, more other inventors and other groups who have working technology, they just haven't had it verified. Uh, right, it is possible that it hasn't been, uh, yeah, there are others that haven't been verified. Yeah, there, you know, of course, we know there's government stuff that's very advanced that, uh, you know, it's all top secret and all that. So there are obviously other organizations out there, but uh, the government stuff, uh, they're not interested in bringing it to the people. So that's why it's, you know, it's all top secret and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, did we have any other questions, brother? I don't see any more, no. Okay, great. Well, that's, that's a good show. It's 11.07. It's been an hour, a little over an hour, an hour and seven minutes, something like that. And, uh, well, you know, we want to thank everybody for joining us on the show.